Good morning, everyone, from the frigid woodlands of central North Carolina. We're out here today hoping to see dwarf water dogs, and uh, we can't find any leaf packs to dip net in. I mean, this creek is just pretty much completely sandy bottom, so we might have to make a strategical reassessment already this early in the day. So I'll keep you guys posted, but we're going to probably try to find a better looking creek. All right, guys, no sooner had I ended that clip, we came across this one little puddle with a few leaves in it. And we have two dwarf water dogs here. Three. Tim just pulled out a third. So these are all juveniles, I'm assuming. They're really small. So what we're gonna do is try to get an adult here. The adult should be a couple inches long. Not very big, of course, hence the name, but bigger than that for sure. No sooner had I ended that clip, Tim pulls out an adult, I'm assuming, dwarf water dog. Just put in the water, see what it looks like. There you go. Dwarf water dogs. All right, guys, I just pulled up a adult dwarf water dog. There you go. Check that out. They look kind of nondescript in the net, but when you put them in the water, you can tell that this is actually a little, little gilled water dog. I'm gonna take this guy over the water real quick. So two adults so far. Well, nine dwarf water dogs and what, three netfuls, four netfuls, including uh, two of these adults and a bunch of little half grown guys and some, uh, some larval ones too. Pretty wild that uh, once we actually found a single good looking leaf pack, we managed to turn up this many of them. So we're assuming that these two guys right there are the, uh, the fully grown adults, but I mean, they could get bigger than that. And these could all be weird little larval things. So anyways, awesome start to the day. We're going to put these guys back in their little mud hole and uh, head on to our next target species. It's not even what, not even 9 a.m., 9.30, something like that. And we already got our first target for the day. That's the, the Necturus view on on life in general. One step forward, two steps back. They're so cool. So cool. All right, guys, so we just rolled up to the habitat for the broken striped newt. I took one dip and uh, there we go. Two broken striped newts. They're kind of dark, so it's hard to see their stripe, but you can kind of make it out right there. These guys are indeed broken stripes. Very cool. These are the uh, aquatic adult life stage of the broken stripe newt. I'm gonna put these guys in the photo aquarium so you can get a better look at them in their environment. All right guys, I got these guys in the photo aquarium and I did actually manage to turn up one more. So three total. This one actually looks like it might be a female. I think the other two are, are boys. But this guy has a surprisingly complete stripe on him for a broken stripe newt. Um, kind of looks more like a stripe newt, but we are in range of broken stripes. So anyway, it's gonna snap a few quick photos of these guys and put them back in their pond. All right, guys, releasing this broken stripe newt back into the pond. On to the next target. All right, guys, we are in the habitat of our next target species, a currently undescribed species of Eurycia, uh, similar to a two-line salamander, but these guys are endemic to this region of North Carolina, and we're hoping to turn one up. Well, guys, this is a larval individual, but this is the undescribed Eurycia species. Anyways, the adults are kind of interesting looking, so hopefully we'll be able to turn up one of those. But for now, this is a nice little life where we're going to let him go and keep looking. Go to North Carolina, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Archives right there. That, that, is, that is not cool. Trying to escape, I sunk up just about as far as my other leg. Oh my god. Now. All right, guys. Tim and the claw, trademark. Have gone MVP and turned up an adult Sandhills Eurycia right here under this pine straw. Look at that thing. 
really strange looking. I mean, it's pretty obvious that this is not a southern two-line salamander, um, even to the untrained eye. I mean, it doesn't have lines. It's like a, a mud salamander that's a Eurycia. All right, guys, here is one more look at probably our most ambitious target for the day and the, the thing we dedicated the most time to looking for, the Sandhills Eurycia. Uh, pretty straightforward looking salamander, but definitely interesting. These guys have not yet been described, but uh, the work's been done is apparently coming out soon, so. Venom in the fangs. All right, guys, oh, <laughs> well, he released himself. All right, guys, it's getting pretty late in the day, but once again, we had a lot of luck getting our target species. Species? Species? Anyways, we found a lot of our targets today in relatively fast pace, and uh, super excited about that yet again. We killed it today. I'm super stoked uh, on how well this trip's gone so far, but we will be targeting the Noose River Water Dog. I'm gonna meet up with one of my buddies who's doing research on this species, and uh, we're gonna see if we can turn one up, so I will see you guys then. All right, guys, we are out here in the habitat of the Noose River Water Dog, hoping to turn one up today. Um, we'd also like to see more dwarf water dogs that we saw. I think I'm going to have those guys in the last video, but hoping to see some more of those too, possibly, or whatever else we can turn up. So, well, guys, we got out here into the habitat of the Noose River Water Dog, and within five minutes, turned up that little guy. That is a juvenile Noose River water dog. Probably the rarest salamander we found on this trip. Absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. We got it in like three scoops of the net. We're going to collect a little bit of data on this guy and send it to someone who's doing research on these amazing animals to help preserve and conserve the species that is endemic to North Carolina. Uh, probably one of the most important natural jewels of the state of North Carolina right here in front of us. So we're gonna photograph this guy, like I said, take a little bit of data and let him go right back into the river. Absolutely amazing way to end our time in North Carolina. Alrighty, ready when you are. Blair's gonna be terrible. Where are you gonna put him right here in the front? Yeah. Let's see, oh, okay. All right, go for it. Straight down into the pack. Hello everyone, it is the next day and we are back in the lovely state of Georgia. Uh, today we will be looking for one of my favorite local species that I have not seen in my home state in several years, the eastern mud salamander. So we're going to hit the swamp and I will let you guys know how this goes. Here are our first herps of the day. A bunch of painted turtles, two just jumped in right there. But there's a number of them right there. Four right there. All right, first herp to show up at this locality is this little desmog, uh, spotted dusky, assuming. And uh, we also have a pseudotriton larva that I'm thinking is probably a ruber rather than Montanus, but I'll give you guys a look at that after this. Look at that pseudotriton larva, uh, kind of sizable, about the same size as the dusky, but kind of hard to tell these guys apart out of the water. Um, so we're gonna get some photos of this guy and send it to a few people and see what they have to say about it, but. We're gonna keep flipping and see if we can turn him an adult. Still not what we're looking for, but a nice looking adult male uh, southern two-line salamander. Put him back under his log. Check out those Siri. Higher up than I thought it was gonna be. There we go, guys. Eastern mud salamander in C2. Awesome. All right, guys, there you go. Eastern mud salamander, the second species of mud salamander we turned up on this road trip. And, uh, one of the very few I've ever seen. So we're gonna get a couple quick photos of this guy and put him back under his muddy log. So no sooner had I finished photographing or started photographing really the last one, Tim flipped our second mud salamander of the day. So <laughs> Tim just flipped four species of salamander under one log. Three line salamander freaking out, spotted dusky salamander, mud salamander number three, and a two-line salamander under one log. <laughs> That's crazy. Another ridiculous flip. One Cerigera, southern two-line salamander, two southern two-line salamanders, and our fourth mud salamander of the day. Um, not really expecting to see any snakes today, and much less a ribbon snake given our location, but I mean, 
East Georgia ribbon snake. Kind of Northeast Georgia. That is strange. I'm gonna photograph this guy and let him go. Flip them under a rock. Marbled salamander, very nice. And a couple of hatched snake eggs. Nice little marbled salamander. There's another marbled salamander. Always nice to see these guys this late in the spring. Cool. Yet another marbled salamander. Nice stripe on that one. <laughs>